Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Uh, I've been dreading making this video for a little bit. Not that it's uh, necessarily a bad thing or anything like that. It's just it's hard. Uh, it's a hard video to make in general. Um, so obviously you can tell by the title, career over. Um, if I make it the title, career over. What's next? Things like that. And before I get into all that, um, I just kind of want to, you know, talk about FSU a little bit. Um, I think the first thing is, uh, I just want to say, say thank you. Say thank you to everybody. Thank you to the coaches, my teammates, my family, um, my girlfriend, um, my really good friends who have always supported me. Um, thank you. But I want to get to the fans. Um, Thank you so much for the support over the years. Um, you guys can sure be brutal. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. Uh, but you know that. You guys can be brutal. But that's what makes FSU great because you guys care so much. And I think that that's rare. It's not, whenever you come to FSU in any sport, you're not going to be um, hailed as the greatest thing since uh, sliced bread uh, just because you step on the court or on the field or um, get in the pool or around the track. Right, so you got to prove yourself, and you got to play well for uh, to to get the recognition you you either deserve or don't deserve. And I think Florida State is one of the top schools in sports in the country because the fans are that way. They're the you guys can be tough on people, but I think that's what what separates us from other schools. Uh, and I, I just want to say thank you for the support over the years. When I first got here, when I first got to FSU, uh, the, the the only sellout games there were were uh, pr pretty much Duke, Carolina, and Florida. Um, and every all the other games, it was like a little bit more sparse. And now it's we've really turned FSU into a premier basketball program in the country. Now, obviously, last season didn't go how we wanted. Uh, we all, everybody knows that. I know that. You know that. Um, it, it just didn't. Um, there were some, you know, circumstances in which uh, it made it very difficult for us. But that, I mean, that's uh, at the end of the day, it's not an excuse. Um, it look whenever you lose five starters, it's it's going to be really tough. And I think, especially, I mean, let me start at the beginning. Okay, right? We get a whole new team basically. So we got what, eight new guys, nine new guys, something like that. So it took us a while to get into a groove. So by the time we finally got into a groove, we get to first in the ACC. So we get to first in the ACC, we're finally in a groove, we're finally playing like a team, we're playing our defense, we're running the offense correctly, we're, we're moving the ball, everybody's getting shots, we're playing great. Boom, four guys go down, a fifth pretty soon after. And next thing you know, we're basically starting over again. We got a whole new team, we a whole new starting five, a whole new rotation. You know, it, so we're learning how to play together again, just like the beginning of the season, except we're playing with seven guys. Now, if you're watching this and you're, you haven't been an FSU basketball fan for very long, I'll give you a little synopsis of how FSU basketball is successful. FSU basketball is successful by not playing with seven guys, okay? We play with 10 or 11. We play a bunch of guys, sometimes 12, 13, 14. So playing with seven was otherworldly, especially to me. You know, my fifth year, I, I didn't know what was going on, right? So we, look, we're, we, we start playing as a team. It takes a while. We get to like Notre Dame and we're, we're, we finally start clicking. We finally start rolling. We're all of a sudden the ball is moving. We get a couple guys back. It's all right, and then pretty much everybody comes back. Well, now we're back to trying to figure out what everybody, you know, like playing together. You know, it's difficult. So you have that through the course of the season, and it's it's really hard. And I just want to say this: everyone's saying, "Oh, the ACC is so weak. The ACC is so weak. Oh, they, everybody in the ACC sucks. There's only going to be one good team from the ACC." Whoa, whoa, whoa. 
Yeah, well, you saw in the tournament just how good the ACC is. All right. I think I think every year that people love to bash the ACC, and it's absolutely ridiculous. We might beat each other, but that's that that shouldn't really count, honestly. Like a nine and nine team in the ACC, is, in my opinion, is one of the best in any other conference. And that I mean, they can be anybody. As you can see, the fifteenth team in the league can beat the first any day, and that's what makes the ACC special, and that's what makes it so hard to play. So. Obviously, we didn't have the best season, but I want to say thank you to the fans for the, a long-winded response, really. But thank you to the fans for sticking around. It, I noticed it. The players noticed it. It's a it's a large motivator to have to even when you know we've lost a few games in a row. I think we lost six in a row when we came into the arena and it was packed. And you know what? It, that's that's a great feeling, and it, it's a motivator because you're like, man, I, we really we got to find a way to win this game. Because we got all of our fans here, and they, they they want us to win so badly, and they're supporting us, and we gotta get it done. So I just want to say, over the years, all the support that you guys have brought, everything, it's just been amazing, and I thank you so much. Even for the people that have just absolutely slandered my name in the comments, I thank you because you know what, you guys matter too. I mean, look, it, I take that as motivation, and I'm always gonna be appreciative of any publicity. Thanks. Uh, is my let's move on. I don't want this to be a forty-minute video, all right? But is my career over at FSU? Yes, it is. It, it's over. I've done five years. I'm not coming back for a six. Whether you're happy about that or sad, um, it, it is what it is. If you're sad about it, I'm sorry. But you know, it, it, there comes a time when you know, you know, it's a, you you've run your course and. For me, I, look, I've been to an Elite Eight, uh, Sweet 16, an ACC championship, and I firmly believe that that team would have won the national championship. I don't think that we could have been beaten. I really don't. I think that there were maybe two teams to three teams in the country that year that on their best day, they, they would have struggled to beat us. I think we would have won a national. I think we would have won the ACC tournament championship, and I think we won, would have won the national championship. So you got that ACC championship, another Sweet Sixteen, and then obviously this year with all the struggles we had, we fell short, and it that is what it is. And I, I feel horrible about it. And I think about it often, but unfortunately, that's how that's how life goes. It's not about how you fall down. Uh, it's not even about how you get back up. It's about what you do afterwards. So. Uh, as a whole, I think, uh, I don't know if I, anyone could have had a better career and enjoyed it more than I did. Um, I love my time at FSU. I came into FSU as a boy and I left as a man and I'll never, uh, never forget, especially what Coach Ham and the, other, and the coaching staff have done for me. They, I mean, they really um, changed my life and I think that they change everyone's life that comes into contact with them because they care so much. They really do. Um, with a little quip to say to you guys: If you ever hear that, like somebody say that Coach Ham cares more about grades than he does about basketball, and you're like, yeah, yeah, all right, whatever, like you know, that, that like good publicity. It's not. He actually does. Like he will not play guys. He will not practice guys if their grades are not good. If they're, if they're not doing well in the classroom, then you don't have the luxury of playing basketball. I, I don't know very many division, especially high major division one college basketball coaches that would do that. Or programs in general where, you know, they would sit guys out because their grades aren't very good. And Coach Ham, he's all about that. And I gotta give it to him. He really does care about the person more than, more than the player. Uh, and that's a that's a huge thing, especially for younger players that are coming in, because you feel that you know that he he loves you as a person. Even even if you struggle on the court, if you have a bad game, Coach Ham's gonna be there. You know what I mean? If if you have a bad week, whatever it is, Coach Ham's gonna be there for you, and so are all the other coaches. And I thank I, I thank them endlessly for that. I'll never be able to repay. In terms of what I'm doing next. Uh, honestly, if you have been watching the channel for very long, you know that I don't ever do one thing at a time. I'm pretty much always doing a bunch of different stuff. So do I have one singular career path picked out? No. 
Uh, could I play overseas? I possibly could, yeah. Um, could I get a job in broadcasting, doing TV, something like that? Absolutely. Uh, could I simply drop everything, taking an absolutely enormous risk, and run the business that my brother and I started? I maybe could. So basically what I'm saying is, I really don't know at this moment. I'm, I'm going through all the different options, and I'm, you know, I'm seeing what's out there and what I can do. Obviously in terms of basketball, I won't know for a couple more months. Um, the year league season doesn't even end until after the NBA season does. Then you have all the workouts and things like that. Am I staying in shape? Absolutely. I'm never out of shape. I, I was born in shape. So uh, I'm still working out, still shooting, still you know, getting all the skill workouts in, still lifting, um, staying in shape, doing all those things. But I'm also exploring other options. Uh, in terms of broadcasting TV, things like that, um, seeing you know what I have to do for YouTube, the podcast, trying to get some more people on that I think you guys would be really interested, really interested in. I'm also running a business with my brother at the same time. I will plug that in the description below. It's hangfree.co. We are making the website right now, but right now we're selling on eBay and Etsy. Um, and follow us on Instagram at hangfree.co. All right, and Facebook. If you're interested, if you go over, I'm not going to explain it, but if you go over there and you say, I oh, screw this, then you don't have to follow us or buy anything. But if uh, you're interested, you're an outdoors person, you're like hunting and stuff like that, go check it out. I think you'll love it. You have the best prices around. But that's about it. I'm going to wrap it up right there. I really just wanted to say, basically, I'm not coming back to FSU, as most of you already probably know, just from tweets or whatever it is. Thank you to everyone, my family, the coaches, my teammates, my friends, the fans. I, I want to say thank you so much. And I have no idea what I'm doing, basically. So, you know, it is what it is. That's just how I roll. Everybody, Some people like to have a structured plan for things that they do. I kind of like to have, to be able, I'm, I'm fluid, basically. But I, I'm... I'm hopeful for the future and I'm looking forward to it and I'm a null for life and um, just like many of you are and um, I cherish that forever so um, I'm 10 toes down forever so thank you again and uh, I think the next video is uh, I think I'm gonna be making some baits and fishing with them if you're interested so be on the lookout for that and uh, like usual have a good one everybody